Greetings again today in the name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. Now it's good to see you here in the house of the Lord today. We most certainly appreciate your presence. May the good Lord bless you. And to you that's listening out in the radio listed audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Church here in Athens, Georgia. Now this is Preacher Edward speaking. We're hoping during the next hour we can be an inspiration to you. And you in the radio listen audience would do us a favor. You do others a favor. You do something I believe would be well worthwhile and pleasing to the Lord if you get on your phone and call a shut-in and have them to tune in and get to Northside Baptist Church Hour because I feel the singing and the message today will be an inspiration and we can help people in that respect. So if you'll do that, you'll be doing us a great favor, and we appreciate it so very much. Now, if you have your Bible, turn to Genesis chapter 24. Genesis chapter 24. While you're turning there, permit me to say a few words to the radio listen audience. If you're not getting our daily broadcast, if you tune to this station while you're now listening, you can get the daily broadcast each day at 12 o'clock noon, Monday through Saturday. And then I covet your prayers. We do uh, record all the Sunday morning programs. We'll have this one on tape. And this one will be number 88. And of course, we're going to use the uh, line of thought. Beho- the, 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 uh, I'll give it to you in just a moment. Here comes a bride. Here comes a bride. That will be my subject today. And so the tape will be number 88. If you're interested in getting the cassette tape, my mailing address is Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia, 30603 is the zip code number. Now, when you write, if you'd like to have one of our brochures or our proposed Holy Land tour, then uh, you request the brochure. We'll get it right in the mail to you. We'd be delighted to send you a brochure. You might think, well, I doubt whether I can go to the Holy Land or not. Well, after you read the brochure, you might decide you could go. I've been there 10 times, and neither time I've gone, I really thought I'd go, but I did go. And so you might uh, do likewise. Right in, get a brochure. You might change your mind when you see where we're going, what we'll be doing. And I hope that you'll get in touch with me and get a, a brochure for the Holy Land tour and look it over. You might want to send a friend, or send your pastor, or send your pastor and his wife. And so it'd be good to take a look at one. And after you see it, I believe you'd might change your mind. A lot of people say, well, I don't want to go over there in the Middle East and all that trouble. Well, if you wait till that's settled, you'll never go. That uh, trouble will never be settled till Jesus comes. It had its beginning back in the tent of Abraham between Isaac and Ishmael, uh, Sarah and Hagar. And that trouble has been going on since that time and will continue to be trouble in the Middle East, till Jesus comes and sets up his kingdom, and then he'll get the descendants of Ishmael and the descendants of Isaac together and settle all those problems. No man will be able to do it. Only God can do that. And if you wait until there's no trouble in the Middle East, you'll never go until you come there during the millennium. Of course, you get to go then. If you're a child of God, you'll go during the millennium. Are you turning to Genesis 24? I trust you are. You know, the devil is really making an attack during these days against the Word of God. There's cults springing up every week in America. A lot of false religions coming into America from out in the uh, uh, Central America and the Far East and various other places. And uh, out in California, there's cults springing up daily, springing up all over the world. The devil is in the religious business and he's going to raise up all the cults he can. But here recently, he's taken another attack against the word of God. Now, the devil took a stab at the word of God when he had the translation of the American Revised Standard Version of the Bible. The Interpreter's Bible, Good News for Modern Man and the Living Bible and all of those things that they call the Bible and call a modern translation, they're satanic. They're not of God. They're bad translations. And then here a few months ago, the Reader's Digest put out a what they call a condensed Bible. Now, you don't condense the Word of God. You may try, but you don't. Now, that's another attack of the devil against the Word of God. Then here, 
It just came out last week where the National Councils of Churches of Christ, or really Antichrist, they're called the National Council of Churches of Christ in America, but really they're the National Council of the Church of the Antichrist in America. They are now trying to desex the Bible. They are trying to take away any distinction between men and women. And they are trying to write a Bible now. When you pray, you say, Our Father and our Mother who art in heaven. And never refer to Jesus as Son. Always refer to Him as a child. And they are doing this. They already have part of it now set up. And pass it out to these churches that's, that belongs to the National Council. And they will be using this rotten, perverted, antichrist translation. Because they don't know any better. They are following blind leaders of the blind. And so they are translating that now. And the reason for it is because of the women's lib movement and the ERA. And they are pushing the National Council of, of uh, Churches or Antichrist Churches in America uh, to do this translation. And the National Council of Churches is nothing more than just a, a social religious movement. They support the terrorists. They support the enemies of this country. They are rank liberals they are communist sympathizers and this council is as rotten as gully dirt and any church that supports it belongs to it whether you like it or not you're supporting the enemies of the cross of jesus christ you're supporting terrorists you're supporting communists and you're supporting everything that uh, the true americans stand for it's a rotten perverted ungodly organization and so now they're tapping with the word of God to desex the Bible. I have some of the clippings here in my study and it's pathetic. It's, it's uh, I'll tell you, it's stupid. And you'll be surprised at the multitudes of blinded people that will follow that translation. And always when praying to the father, they'll always say, our father and our mother. And never refer to Jesus other than call him a child. That is a subtle, cunning attack to the devil against the Bible. And you're going to have more and more of that kind of stuff and cults risen up, arising up in these last days because the devil is really trying to attack the word of God, the deity of Jesus Christ, because he knows his time is short. Now today I want to speak to you pertaining to a subject, Here Comes the Bride. I realize today about the only thing some husbands and wives have in common is that they were married on the uh, same day. That's about the only thing they have in common. There's a woman one time that finished high school and later on she met a, a friend and a friend said to her, said, how are you doing? She said, well, I'm doing fine. I've been married four times. I married a millionaire and then I married a movie star and then I married a preacher and now I'm married to an undertaker. And a friend said, well, is anything significant about the order in which you married these men? She said, sure they are. Said, uh, of course, you married the million. Now we find a man in the Bible by the name of Abraham. Abraham was a great man. He had a son by the name of Isaac, through which God promised to, uh, of course, uh, bless the nations and send the Messiah. And Abraham had some problems in his home. And he got his problems all settled. And then all of a sudden, like a clap of thunder out of a clear sky, God said, Abraham, Abraham. He said, yes, sir. God said, I want you to take your son Isaac to Mount Moriah and there sacrifice him on the altar. Now, that was hard for Abraham to do. But he said, Lord, if that's what you want to do, that's exactly what I'll do. And so he took his son Isaac and a couple of servants. And they went to the foot of the hill of Mount Moriah and then... Abraham placed the wood on Isaac's back and went to the top of the hill, left the servants at the foot of the hill, placed the wood in order which was in the form of a cross, laid his son on that altar, had his knife ready and the fire ready. And his son said to him, said, Father, uh, you have the fire and the knife and ready for the sacrifice, but where is the sacrifice? And Abraham said, Son, my God will provide himself a sacrifice. And so he laid his son down on the altar and raised his hand to slay his son and God said Abraham Abraham stay your hand and he stayed his hand he said Abraham there's a ram caught there in the thicket I want you to let Isaac up off that altar take that ram and sacrifice in his place now, all of that is as full of typology of course the ram a type of Christ 
And so there they sacrificed that ram instead of Isaac. Abraham was willing and obedient to obey God. Now that's a type of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. But the point I want you to get is this. Abraham went back down from Mount Moriah, joined his two servants and went back to his camp. And the Bible didn't say a word about Isaac going back down with him. And you don't find Isaac mentioned anymore until you get to Genesis 24. Now in Genesis 22 is where the sacrifice was made. But you come to Genesis chapter 24 and you have Isaac mentioned again. And that is when Abraham sent his servant to secure a bride for his son Isaac. And Isaac is in the field and he goes out to meet the bride to come to meet uh, Rebecca. Now this is a uh, beautiful in type because the very fact that Isaac is not mentioned anymore until chapter 24. And you see him then later when he's receiving his bride. That's a type of Jesus Christ being crucified goes back to heaven. And we don't see him anymore until he meets his bride in the air. All of that is a wonderful type of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so Isaac goes out then to meet the camels coming in with his beautiful bride and meets her out in the field. Now I want to read my text and then bring the message. I'll read a verse or so in the book of Genesis chapter 24. And I want to read verse 63 in particular. Genesis 24 and verse 63. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the evening tide. And he lifted up his eyes and saw and behold the camels were coming. Now look at verse 64. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes. And when she saw Isaac she lighted off the camel. Now I want to give you this story and show you how this is a beautiful type. Of the church being sought out today. To make up the bride of Jesus Christ. Abraham was very careful about who his son Isaac married. And he called his servant Eliezer, the man that had charge of all of his goods. And Eliezer is a type of the Holy Spirit. And he says, Eliezer, I want you to take ten camels loaded with goods. And I want you to go back to my country, the heir of the Chaldees. And I want you to find a bride and bring that woman back to marry my son Isaac. He's of age. It's time for him to get married. God had promised to bless the nation and send the Messiah uh, through Abraham and through Isaac. And it's time to go. So Eliezer, being obedient to Abraham, his master, gets his ten camels ready. He loads them down with wonderful gifts. He heads across the desert. He travels many days and nights and weeks until he comes to heir the Chaldees. Now Abraham said, Now, I don't want my son Isaac to marry a woman here in the land of Canaan. Because those Canaanites are descendants of the grandsons of Noah that uh, God put a curse upon because of Noah's sin. I don't want him to marry a Canaanite. Send him back to our own people, back to Nahor, back to uh, the heir of the Chaldees and let him uh, secure a bride there for my son Isaac. But he said, Isaac cannot go back there. I'm not letting Isaac go back to secure the bride. And that's a beautiful type because that's a type of Jesus not coming back to the earth until the bride is complete and then we meet him in there. He could not send Isaac back to there the Chaldees. He said, my son shall not go back there. So when Jesus went back to heaven and Eliezer, the Holy Ghost, took over on the day of Pentecost, Jesus is not to come back until the bride is brought to meet him in the air. And that's exactly what the Holy Spirit will do. And the Holy Spirit today is calling out that bride. And every born again believer is part of the bride of Christ. So Abraham is very careful about who marries Isaac. And then he sends that servant back. And the servant is a type of the Holy Spirit. Uh, if you read Genesis 24 verses 2 and, uh, through 4, you'll see what I mean. And then he goes on his way. He has a mission to perform. He has a job to do. And his job is... You go back to the air of the Chaldees and you find a woman, fine young beautiful maiden to come and marry Isaac. Now it took Eliezer a long period of time to travel across that desert. But all the way over he was prayerful. He wanted to be sure that he found the right woman. And he finally arrived on the scene and he put out the fleece and he said, Lord, the woman that comes to the well to draw water, let her be the woman. Now he knew that 
Women came at a certain hour of the day to draw water in those days. According to John 4 and according to scriptures in the Old Testament. And he waited there at the well. And it wasn't long until a very beautiful virgin came to draw water. And her name was Rebecca. And we find that Eliezer prayed very much. He wanted to be guided by the hand of God. Now, God told Abraham, I'll send my angel along with Eliezer and be sure that he goes to the right place in the right direction. My angel will guide him. And so this woman came to the well. She's a very sweet person, industrious person. And she saw the stranger standing at the well, Eliezer, that traveled all the way from Canaan to Ere the Chaldees. And she engaged him. He did her in a conversation. And he told her a few things about him. And she said, let me draw you some water. And she drew him some water and said, now let me draw some water also for your camels. That showed you she was not a lazy person. She would not be a lazy housewife. She would not be too lazy to cook and clean up the house and care for the children. Wanted to get about and suck cigarettes and play cards and stay on the dance floor and in the beer hall. She was a type person that uh, was uh, loved God and clean and pure and holy. And a person that didn't mind working. And she said, I will draw water for your camels also. So he prayed and he sought out wisely the need for his master's son Isaac. And he meets her at the well of water. Now you remember in John chapter 4, we find Jesus met a woman at the well of water and it's symbolic of salvation. He told her about the water of life. And there she of course drank from the water of life, the well of the water of life, eternal life. Now she gives him water, she waters his camel, uh, camel's rather. And so when Eliezer went back to secure this bride, now this is a picture of the Holy Spirit now calling out a bride for Christ. From the day of Pentecost until this very hour, Eliezer, the Holy Ghost, has been calling out a bride for Jesus Christ. Just like Eliezer went back and sought Rebecca and found her and sold her own Isaac, the Holy Ghost today is seeking out sinners that will be saved and added to the body of Christ, that will be the bride of Christ, that will meet the greater Isaac, the Lord Jesus Christ, in the air. 1 Thessalonians 4, whenever he comes in the air. Now Abraham and Isaac is back in Canaan. They didn't go with Eliezer. He said, my son Isaac shall not go there. Which of course, had he gone back, that would destroy the type. When Jesus went back to heaven, God said, my son Jesus will not go back down there to find a bride for himself. I send Eliezer, the Holy Ghost. So Isaac could not go back. He had to wait. And he and his father waited there in the land of Canaan, which is a type of God the Son and the Father in heaven, waiting there in heaven until Eliezer gets back from the other Chaldees, as it were, to bring the bride back to meet Jesus in the air. In verse 16, it says, The damsel was a very fair to look upon. She is a very beautiful, beautiful person, clean virgin girl, a maiden there in the other Chaldees, and Eliezer, guided by the angel, found the exact one for Isaac to be the mother of a great nation and of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in a sense. In the Songs of Solomon in chapter 4 and verse 1, speaking about the church, said, Behold, thou art fair, my love. Behold, thou art fair. That's the way God looks upon his church. Thou art fair, my love. Behold, thou art fair. In Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 27, tells you how God wants his church. That it might, he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but it should be holy and without blemish. Now like Eliezer seeking out a bride for Isaac, a woman, a maiden, a virgin, pure and clean, very beautiful, very lovely, a girl that Isaac would fall in love with at first sight, very careful being sure he got the right one, so is the Holy Ghost today moving among people, saving a soul here, saving one there, saving one here, adding that body and soul to the body of Christ to make up the bride of Christ, that the bride of Christ might be beautiful, holy, pure, and clean when it meets the Lord in the air. Now this servant went on his way, and then when he arrived at the well, not one time did Eliezer brag on himself. He constantly bragged upon Isaac. 
He couldn't say enough about Isaac. He kept telling Rebecca and her mother and dad and her brother all about what Isaac had and how he would inherit his father's goods and how Abraham was a rich man and Isaac was heir to all of his wealth and just kept telling her what a fine, handsome young man Isaac was. Sold her on Isaac. Having not seen, yet she loved him. The Bible says, having not seen the Lord Jesus, yet we love him. And in John chapter 16, verses 13 to 15, you'll find there how the Holy Spirit brags on God. The Holy Ghost never brags on himself. He brags on the Lord. He said, how be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he'll guide you into all truth. But he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things the Father hath of mine. Therefore, said I, he shall take them out and show it unto you. The Holy Spirit today is busy helping us to love Jesus more and more, love the Word of God more and more as we move toward the end. When you see people jumping up in the flesh, bragging on themselves and what they do, then that's not of the Spirit of God. That's all of the flesh. That's not of God. A lot of people try to show off, you know, and say, try to prove they have something others don't have by showing off in the flesh or what they do or the way they dress or what not to try to prove their power and their influence and so forth. But that's not the Holy Spirit doing that. That's all in the flesh. No doubt about that. And then he goes, he tells her then about Isaac, about Abraham, his master, not one time bragging on himself, but selling her on Isaac all the time. And then time came for him to go back. He said, I want you to go back with me across the desert, back to the land of Canaan, and marry that young man, Isaac. That's what I came for, to find the bride. And she was willing. She was willing to go. He kept showing her the gifts that he brought. And, and he had ten camels loaded with wonderful gifts. He showed those gifts to her parents and to Laban, her brother. And he was constantly telling her about the wonderful man, Isaac, and his wealth and his future. And then he asked her now, are you willing to go back? In verse 8, And if the woman will not be willing to follow thee, then thou shalt be clear from this my oath. Abraham said, Eliezer, you go back and find that woman. If she's not willing to come, then you are not responsible. The Holy Ghost today is busy convicting sinners. He's doing what God sent him to do. And if those sinners don't repent and get right with God, the Holy Ghost is not responsible. God will hold them accountable. In verse 15, And they call Rebekah, that is a parrot's, Call her there before Eleazar and said unto her, Will thou go with this man? Will you go back with this man, this servant of Abraham, across the desert and marry Isaac? And you know what she said? She said, I will go. Just like when you married your wife, you know, and the minister said, Would you take this man to be your lawfully wedded uh, uh, husband and so forth? And you said, I will and many of you have been wilting ever since. But anyway, she said, I will. And she was willing to go back to Abraham and to Isaac. She turned away from mother and home and followed a man until now that was a stranger to her. That's exactly what happens to Christians when they get saved. When you become a child of God, then you turn from the, the worldly affairs of this world to God you began to follow the Holy Spirit, a person you'd never known that was a complete stranger to you until you come to know Him as your Savior. And she's presented now with gifts by the servant in verses 22 and 53. He gave her silver, which speaks of redemption. He gave her jewels of gold, which speaks of God's glory. He gave her earrings, which are uh, 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 placed in her ear, of course, which speaks of hearing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. He gave her bracelets for her hands, which speaks of serving God with her hands. He gave her raiment, a figure of a robe, all for the Father's house. And there he showed her these gifts, gave her these gifts. And all this is a type of the, the uh, glory of God, the, the uh, Shekinah glory, and also the glory that God gives to the individual when he's saved. And of course, these other things to prove that they're ready for service. Now the servant's work is done. He's now eager to be on his way. He said she's willing to go. She's seen the gifts. I presented the, uh, the gifts. And now I must get on my way back across the desert to carry this beautiful, lovely virgin maiden back to her husband-to-be. 
and he gets ready to go and she sent away with her master now her brother Laban said now just let her stay here 10 more days now that's a type of the flesh that's a type of the 10 commandments you can't be saved by keeping the 10 commandments and the flesh is always bucking the spirit and Laban said let her stay here 10 more days and your flesh tells you don't go all out for God don't, don't be a fanatic for Jesus just go out here and enjoy the world Wait 10 more days before you go back. The flesh is telling you, don't go all out for God. And then they start on their way and all the way back across the desert. Eliezer was busy telling Rebecca about the wonderful things of Isaac. He kept close guard upon her. He watched over her by day and by night. He saw no harm came to her and just kept on telling her about Isaac. That's exactly what the Holy Spirit does today. He protects us, He guides us, He fills us, He blesses us, and He reveals the things of God unto us and helps us fall deeply in love with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now this Eliezer had come all the way from the area of the Chaldees, over there, rather from Canaan to the area of the Chaldees, and now he's to go back. Now he knows the way. See, he's been across there before. He's already been in Canaan. He comes to the area of the Chaldees. Now he's to carry her back to Canaan. And that's exactly what the Holy Ghost is doing. He knows the way. He's already been in heaven. And now he's come down here to get a bride for the great Isaac. And he knows the way back. And in due time as he guides us across the desert. And he's been guiding us across the desert since the day of Pentecost. And he knows all the way back to the end. He knows the way then back up to heaven because he's always already been there. And so he knows the way. Now they come. They move on toward the journey's end. Been traveling many days across the desert. Eliezer kept saying, Rebecca, I'm telling you, uh, that man you're going to marry, he's a wonderful feller, and he's a rich man. His father Abraham is very wealthy, and he'll, uh, he's heir to everything his father owns. And not only that, God's going to make a great nation, promise Abraham he would, and he'll make this great nation through Isaac, and on and on he'll go, and then of course eventually Messiah would come through uh, this line, no doubt about it. And so he tells her all about this, and she can't hardly wait to see this man. While he so sold her on Isaac, she could hardly wait to get there. No doubt she said, Mister, how much longer is he? He said, Well, not too much longer. We have come a long way. We have come all the way from Pentecost now. And we're almost there. That's exactly where we are today. And just before they got there, no doubt she said, I, 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 We've been coming a long time. How much longer? How much longer? And he said, Not long now. We started at Pentecost. It's now almost 11 o'clock. And the 12 o'clock is, uh, is about ready to, to uh, tick off. And so uh, we're just about there. That's exactly where we are today. Some people say, how much longer, Lord Jesus? How much longer will it be before we see you? And so she was anxious to see this man. And Isaac was watching. He was watching. The Lord Jesus Christ today is watching from heaven. He's watching. Eliezer is down here getting the bride across the desert. Adding to the bride, carrying us across the desert, starting on the day of Pentecost, moving on toward the end. Isaac, our great Isaac, is watching there in heaven, and he sees the bride coming. Won't be long now, and will soon be there, according to the Bible. In verse 63, Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the evening tide, and he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. Don't you know his heart began to palpitate in his bosom? They are realizing on those camels would be one of the most beautiful, one of the most loveless girls of the air of the Chaldees. And he saw those ten camels coming. He could hardly wait. No doubt his blood pressure shot up. And he began to look. Oh, I wonder. I wonder if I can get a glimpse of her. And the Bible said he was watching. He saw the camels coming. And the Bible says in verse 64, And when Rebekah saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel. She said to Eliezer, Who is that man? Eliezer said, That's him. That's him. That's the man you're to marry. And she took a veil and placed it over her face, which was the custom in those days, and she lighted off her a camel. And lighted off the camel. And, and the servant told her, said, the man is in the field, that's him. And so she went out to meet him. And she came walking toward him. He came walking toward her. She covered her face with the veil. The wedding now is about ready to take place. And in verse 6 and 7, Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent. And took Rebecca, and she became his wife. And he loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. His mother Sarah had died. And Sarah is a type of the nation of Israel. And now since she's dead, 
Then the Eliezer is bringing this woman Rebecca into her tent. That's exactly what's happening today. Israel was scattered in 70 AD. Left the land of the Holy Land. Left Sarah's tent in 70 AD. Been scattered now gone like Sarah died. Now the Holy Ghost is bringing in a people for the bride of Christ to be. And so Sarah died. And so the bride comes and meets Isaac in the field. That's a type of the, the Holy Spirit taking out the church to meet Jesus in there, which is the bride of Christ to be. We'll meet our greater Isaac up in the air. And then we're going into Sarah's tent. Well, these days we're coming back to the land of Israel. Then Jerusalem, the ruler reigned on the earth for a thousand years. And so he was comforted after he lost his mother, Sarah. And so since that time now, Eliezer has been bringing the bride from Pentecost out of this present hour. In Revelation chapter 19, verses 7 and 8, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen and clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Beloved, are you in the bride of Christ today to be? If you're lost, you're not. If you're saved, you are. And the Holy Ghost Eliezer is guiding you. And pretty soon now, your great Isaac will catch you up. The, the Eliezer will carry you up to meet the great Isaac in the air. That's the rapture. And we go back into Sarah's tent. And there we'll be on a honeymoon for a thousand years in the land of Israel. How wonderful, how wonderful things are that are waiting for the saved, born again people of God. And if you're not one in that group, what a loser you'd be to die without God and miss the rapture. You ought to turn to Jesus today. Tomorrow could be too late. Let us all stand to our feet. Our Father, I pray today you'll take the message and that you'll use it and that you speak to many hearts. And thank you, dear God, for the privilege of being part of the bride of Jesus. And we look at our Father one day to see our great Isaac as he walks across the field, as it were, or as he meets us in the air, as Eliezer carries us out to meet him in the air at the rapture. Speak to hearts here today. May Jesus be glorified today. We pray in his lovely name and for his sake. Amen. Now, while Deb is playing on the organ softly, if somebody here needs to be saved, need to come back to God, or you want to join the church the way we receive members, you may come while she plays for just a moment. I've given you the message. The invitation will be extended. It's up to you now. It's up to you. The responsibility is yours. And it's up to you as to what you do about it. How about it? While we wait. church would you come you need to come back to God for any reason the invitation is yours what would you do about it 